So today we're looking at lead code number 287. It's a question called find the duplicate number. This is a very frequently asked question. You can see that in the last six months, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, Google have been asking this. It is, it can look a little intimidating, but there is a, there's a pattern that's, that this problem is using. And if you utilize that pattern, it can actually be solved quite quickly. Okay, so let's take a look at the prompt here. We're given an array of integers num containing n plus 1 integers, where each integer is in the range of 1 to n inclusive. There is only one repeated number in nums. Return this repeated number. So here we have a nums array, 1, 3, 4, 2, 2. We want to return 2. Here we have uh, an array, example 2. We have 3, 1, 3, 4, 2. We want to return that 3. In example three, we have one, one. We want to return that one. Same thing for example four. So here's some caveats here. We want to, we want to prove that uh, at least one duplicate number exists in nums, okay? And can we solve this problem without moderating, modifying the nums, the nums array? Can we solve this problem using only constant space? Okay, and can we solve this con uh, uh, problem with a runtime of less than O of n squared? Now, the, there's a couple different ways you can do this intuitively, right? You can obviously go ahead and hash all these numbers, and then if there's a duplicate, you can go ahead and say, you know, return the element in the hash that has more than, that is, is occurring in a frequency of more than one. That's one brute force way to do this, but then we would not be able to do this in constant space. We'd have to create extra space for that. The other way is we could do, um, if we want to use constant space, then we could, a brute force way, is just take this one, check if it's in included in that array, it's not, take this three, check if it's included, take this four, check if it's included, take this two, it is included, and return that it's, it's included. Uh, the issue with that is then we're going into quadratic time so we have a time and space issue there with both of those brute force approaches. Now, how can we solve this problem in linear time and constant space? And the way we want to think about this problem is think of it as a graph. Okay, so first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and go in the conceptual overview. So we have one, three, four, two, two. Uh, here I have the numbers. 1, 3, 4, 2, 2. Okay, and I have indices here of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And there's some interesting things to notice in this prompt. Number one, that we're giving an array of integers, nums containing n plus 1 integers, where each integer is in the range of 1 to n inclusive. Okay. So that's really important because we can look at these integers as indices, okay? And if we can convert this array and rep look at it as a graph, okay? And so what I mean by that is let's say we have this zeroth, we have this zeroth index here, and what's over here? There's a one, okay? So now we have a one as our first node. Where does this one go? Well, it goes over here, and what's the value? It's three, so this is pointing to three. Now we go to the third index here, and what is the uh, value? It is two. Okay, so that three is pointing to two. Now we go to the second index here. Okay, and what is the value? It's four. Okay, and now we go to the to the fourth index here, and what's the value? It's two, and you can see it's pointing back to two. And so we have a cycle, okay? And the way we have to think about this is 1, 3, 2, 4. I'm sorry, we spoke a little too soon here. This is actually going to be, this 4 is going to be pointing to 2. And then here when we get to this 2, this is pointing back to 4. Okay, so there's our cycle. Okay. And what you can see here is that here's this 4 node. This is the start of the cycle, right? And what we have to notice here is we see that there are two incoming pointers to this fourth node, 
okay? So if there are two pointers, that means that there is a two and a two pointing at that fourth node. And that means that that is where the repeating number is. Because if there are two pointers pointing to any node, that means that it's, it's, a re, it's the same number. It's a repeating number in, in, the, input, in the input array. Okay, and so how do we how do we now figure out how, if we do represent this as a graph? How do we get that to? And this is this is something uh, with it's a algorithm called Floyd's algorithm, and it uses two pointers. Okay, let me use uh, I'll use yellow. You want to use a fast and slow pointer, and you want to figure out if there's a cycle. Okay, because if you have a fast and slow pointer, when those two fast and slow pointers interact, intersect, that means that there is a cycle. Once you have that, then you want a third pointer that starts at the beginning, and you want to keep on incrementing that fast or slow pointer. It doesn't matter. They're going to be at the same place. Incrementing both of those by one, and when those intersect, it will be at the start of the cycle. And then we would just want to get the number before that. Okay. So this will, make a, this will make a little more sense as we walk through it. So here I have a slow pointer and I have a fast pointer. And I'm gonna increment the fast pointer twice and the slow pointer once. So the first iteration, fast will go here and slow will go here. Then fast is gonna come here and slow is gonna come here. Fast is now gonna go to four and it's gonna go back to two. So it's just gonna be stuck at two we'll increment slow and then we'll increment slow and now they have both met here at that that uh, two node okay so now that we have that we're gonna get a third pointer now and we're gonna increment both the slow pointer and the the third pointer once until they meet okay and they should meet at this four but let's test our our theory here so here we increment the, the pointer and we increment slow we increment the pointer we increment slow and we increment the pointer, it comes here on this four and we increment the slow and that also comes here on this four. And now we are at the start of the cycle. So like we did when we represented here in the array here, we know that any, any value we have, okay, we just return the index. The index is where that value is coming from. So here, if we know the start of the cycle is gonna have two pointers pointing at it, then we just get we just return the index. That's all we have to do. Okay. It still may sound a little confusing. Let me run it. Um, uh, let me go ahead and write it out in code, and it will hopefully make a little more sense once we code it out. Okay. So first, what we want to do is we want to get our fast uh, pointer. We just set it to zero, and we want to have a slow pointer, and we can also set that to zero. Okay, and now what we can do is we can just create a while loop. We'll just say while true. And what do we wanna do? We want to increment our fast and slow. So fast is gonna equal nums, nums of fast, and slow is gonna be nums of slow. Okay, and we're just, we're basically, all we're doing is we're going two times deep into the array for fast and we're just going one time deep into the array for slow. And now what we want to do is you want to check if fast equals slow. That means that's where our cycle is. That's that's where the nodes are intersecting. And if it does, now we want to have a whole another loop. We have to now have a third pointer. So we can say let pointer equals zero. And we know fast and slow are at the correct position, so now we just have to increment. We'll just use slow. We can use fast or slow, but we'll increment either one of those along with pointer. And when they intersect, the previous node where they're coming from is our answer, and that'll be the index. Okay, so we'll just do a while uh, pointer does not equal slow. Okay, we're gonna increment pointer. And we're going to increment slow. OK. 
okay? And now when they do meet, we want to return the value that was right before. And it can be either slow or pointer. So we just go ahead and return pointer, which is the index. Okay, because when these values both meet each other, we're gonna break out of the loop. But again, the value is going to be different than the index, and so that is what we're gonna return. Okay, we can run that, and, and that works. Okay, and so let's take a look at time and space complexity. If this is still unclear for you, it, it takes a while to kind of understand the pointers and the array and how, how that kind of works, um, I would recommend just stepping through this the code one or two times until it, it becomes a little bit more clear on why we're returning the index and not the value. But the reason we're doing that is, is remember, we want, we know that this four right here is going to have two pointers pointing to it, okay? And so when we're representing the four, Okay, we want to return that index because that is the previous node. We want to return this two here, okay? Because we know that if there's a two here that's pointing to that four and there's a two here that's pointing to that four, then that is where the duplicate number is. Okay, let's take a look at time and space complexity. So, <coughs> how many times are we iterating over the input? We're iterating over it once. <coughs> So that means our time complexity is going to be O of n. And then are we creating any space that is relative to the size of the input? We are creating space because we're creating a fast and slow pointer, but we're not the space is not increasing or decreasing relative to the input. So our space is going to be um, constant time, O of 1. OK, which is pretty good. Okay, so that is lead code number 287, find the duplicate number. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you on the next one.